I was held at gunpoint inside of my home and they abducted me. I was handcuffed to a bed and wearing a mask, so I saw no light for 14 days. I was tortured, I was beaten, I was starved. It was horrific. I was literally awaiting my death, right? I really had no option but to place the future of my kids in God's hands and say, okay, I know you love them more than I do. Just please take care of them. And I, I just kind of gave up. I remember drifting off into a sleep. Literally in the blink of an eye, I was above myself. I was so confused. Huh? Okay, how can I be here and how can that be me? So I went down to take a closer look. And I saw that it was me. I saw the, the mask, the handcuffs, the room that I was held in. But the odd thing was, there was absolutely no pain. In fact, I felt better than I had ever felt in my entire life. I saw light. I was free. Uh, from the side of my eye, I saw a light, a white light. It started to grow larger and larger. And as, as it grew larger, out of that light stepped Jesus. I was so humbled and overjoyed at the same time. I assumed he was wearing white, but there was so much white light emanating from him. You couldn't really discern if it was a robe or uh, if there was a hood or anything like that. But his head was exposed. His hair, his face was exposed and there was just white light. I remember looking at his toes and thinking, oh, he's wearing a sandal. And then I looked a little closer and then I realized, wait a minute, that's not a sandal. That's just light. He was bare feet. He picked me up and cradled me just like you would a, a, an infant. It's not logical that an adult would fit into another adult's arms like an infant. But I did. And I snuggled on him and he, he touched my hair and he said, It's okay. It's okay now. You'll be okay. No more pain. No more suffering. You can rest. Cannot explain what a comfort that was to me. Most glad. Uh, when I awakened, we were walking on the beaches of heaven. I just marveled at everything, just like a little baby would. And I remember looking over his shoulder, and I noticed that when he walked, there were no footprints. Why is that? And he immediately said, because you're not supposed to go back. When it dawned on me, oh, I'm not going to see my babies again, there was no sorrow. It was like an acceptance of a fact. And this is what he, one of the things he said to me. It's an impossibility to feel sorrow or fear or shame or guilt or any negative emotion in that realm. And he put me on the sand and just like a little baby for the first time on the beach, you know, wiggling my toes in, digging my feet in. When I stooped down, I, you know, I held the grains of the sand. They were, they were crystal. They were actual crystals. But they didn't hurt my feet. It was very, very soft. And he held my hand and we walked along the beach and I observed the water. But oddly enough, as he stepped, the movement of the water would stop. And it was strange because how could there not be at least a little ripple in the water? So I'm questioning, you know, logically in my head and he's responding to me and he says, that's because everything was stand still in my presence. And when we passed by, then there would be a little ripple after. It, it was just so awesome. Indescribable. The green and the trees nearby was like nothing I've ever seen. The sky, well, there was no sky. Just light everywhere. No blue, no clouds. So in my mind, I'm asking, so where is the light coming from? Because there was no sun. And his response was, the light you see is the light of God. Oh, but I didn't fully understand until I looked at a rock nearby. The rock itself was completely surrounded with light. There was no shadow. I looked at the leaves on the tree. There was no shadow of any leaf. And it was then I observed the light of God is just everywhere all at once. When we got to the end of the beach, there was an even more brilliant white light. And out of that white light was a voice, voice of God. He said, so Debbie, you do want to go back for your kids. 
And I almost felt embarrassed, but I could not. You know, there was this inability to be embarrassed because I know there would be no judgment. I said, yes, I really, they need me. I need to go back if I can. And then he said, okay, you can go back to your children, but this is what you must continue to do for me on earth. And he showed me what the book would look like, bare feet. I saw the cover design. And believe me, I've had many suggestions. Oh, let's change this to that. And I said, no, no, no. If it means the book sells less, no problem. This is what God wants. This is what I want to do. That light disappeared and I knew, I just knew, okay, everything was going to be okay. I turned around and Jesus was all broad smile, grinning almost, you know, he was so happy. And uh, he looked at me and he said, uh, everything will be okay now. You'll see. He placed his hand on my head and there was this warmth that permeated every strand of hair down to the soles of my feet. And at that point, I re it, it occurred to me, he's removing every illness from me. Then we walked back along the beach and when we were almost at the beginning of the beach, he hugged me one more time and then he disappeared. So I took two steps forward and there on my left side and my right side were uh, saints. They were all wearing uh, white robes, but their heads were covered. I'm not sure if they were, I was not permitted to see what their faces looked like, but their heads were all bowed with the, with the, like the hood over. On my left shoulder was Archangel Michael, who I grew up not knowing anything about. And on my right shoulder was, Arch was Archangel Gabriel. The angels, white light with the wings. People have this opinion that uh, white and slow teams and all of them, you know, for lack of a better phrase, they are bad. They're in excess of nine feet tall. Archangel Michael with his sword. They are like soldiers. They are not airy feathery. They are their own business. Mother Mary, however, was wearing a light brown tunic. Her hair was covered, but you could see her face. The saints bowed their heads to pray for me, and Mother Mary, the only one that turned, lifted her face and looked at me. And she smiled, a mother's smile. And she said to me, God always answers the prayer of a mother. I suddenly began to go very tired. And I lay down on the sand in a fetal position, you know, curled up fetal position. And I remember my journey back to my body. I was flying through space and time, free, light. I was whirling like a dancer. I knew that I could go back to my past if I wanted to. I could visit other planets. Oh man, I was just, that was unreal and awesome. And there, there was, um, unfortunately, a knowing that I had to go back to my body. And I remember that gas. Suddenly, this body felt so much worse. When you've experienced that freedom, that life, what's really real, and then you come back to this, it can be so depressing. I still, I long for home. This is not home, people. This is a camping trip compared to what awaits us. When I returned to my body, I was calm because I knew it would be okay. There was no more fear. I spent 12 days waiting to die, not knowing in what manner I would be killed. And of course, imagining the worst possible ways. But there I was, after this experience, absolutely calm and smiling. I had no clue how it was going to happen, when it was going to happen, but I knew it would be okay. Two nights later, they accepted the proposal to, to try one more drop of the ransom money, and that was successful. And I resumed. God's message to the world was, I see all, I hear all, I know all that happens in the darkness and the light. And I say, he saved me from an impossible situation. The police couldn't understand why the kidnapper would give me back my own phone so I could call my husband. That has never been done. Nobody understands why the keeper was a beast towards me and then the very next day he became my protector and swore to me that he was my friend and they would, anybody coming to hurt me would have to kill him first that was divine intervention when i put everything in god's hands that's what happened 
because he admitted to me, I'm a stone cold killer. I've killed many people. I've butchered many people in my life. And he cried and he apologized. Apologized. That was not my doing. That's God's doing. When I went to the doctor, to the hospital after I was released, the doctors told me, point blank. Debbie, most likely you would have contracted HIV from one of these. He told me there was a 98% chance that I have HIV. I was not worried because I knew that when Jesus did this, all of it was wrong. And when the test, the final test came back, they were all negative. The doctor was baffled. He was confused. No STD, no HIV, nothing. So take comfort. Please take comfort. That is not to be feared. We don't die. <laughs> we leave our we leave our meat so behind and we continue to live. So death is not something to be feared. In fact, I look forward to it. When my time is calm, oh my gosh, I will be thrilled. I'm going home, I'm going home. That's the excitement. The book that I wrote, Bare Feet, tells a lot about that experience in great detail. I will put the link to my Instagram and Facebook and website and so on. I, I do a lot of counseling as well. Trauma counseling, PTSD, uh, sexual assault, that kind of thing. Usually it's no charge. 